Hi, everybody. Hope you um, had a good Back to Work Tuesday. Tomorrow, I have a Back to Work Wednesday coming after a long vacation from my uh, my television work. Anyway, I want to start, because I didn't do this yesterday, with a look at the climate report for the month of December, site-specific PDX, the one that goes in the record book for Portland, because uh, it was a very warm, very wet month, as you know. Nothing you don't know there. But check out, take a look at some of these numbers because the stats are impressive. So on the fourth day of December, you may remember this, Portland hit 67 degrees, not only a record for the date, but 67 is now the all-time record for the warmest temperature in the month of December at PDX, period. The average high for the month, 51.4. This is December, right? A lot of days in the 40s, not this time. The average high, 51.4 actually tied December of 1950 as the warmest December in terms of average high temperature. The average low, 40.9. We did have some, you know, a lot of nights in the valley where temperatures were around freezing, but uh, the average low was 40.9. That tied for second, not, I'm sorry, not tied, but the second warmest all time. And then I mentioned this yesterday in my video, the mean temperature, when you combine the average high and the low, the mean temperature, 46.1, Second warmest all time for the month of December, and that averaged out to be 4.5 degrees above normal. And it's that number that I was so tickled about as a forecaster because my winter outlook, I mentioned this yesterday going back to October, projected December to be the warmest month of the winter season in terms of departure from normal. And the number I put out there on my outlook was that this December could average out to be four and a half degrees above normal. And I hit that exactly right. Rainfall, not a record, not even the top five, but well above normal, 8.73, just about three inches above normal. And that has us in the surplus department for the water year going back to uh, the start of October. So what a mild month. All indications are January will not be that warm. It's, it's not clear to me if we average to be above normal or below normal, but I think we're going to be pretty close to normal, one degree or so, uh, either way of the ledger. I, I talked about that in my winter outlook uh, update video I did just a couple of days back. Okay, here are the headlines for what we're talking about right now. Here's the current satellite picture. There's a front offshore. The low itself, see the double low at the surface? None of this comes inland. It all just kind of weakens and drops to the south and the flow pattern splits and we get some light rain at times overnight tonight, some light rain at times tomorrow on Wednesday. A change to my forecast has a likely push of rain coming in Thursday morning. But uh, we're not going to get into any more what I would consider really active, substantial weather until we get rolling into the weekend. So uh, when I look at everything out through the next seven days, the wettest days in terms of total precipitation this coming Saturday the valley could see 75, 107 inch. Monday, not as heavy of a rain day, but a day that could be raining most of the day with about three tenths. And then we get another system with some heavier rain rates on Tuesday at six tenths of an inch of rain. This is a very active flow pattern. And because of that, we're going to start seeing a lot of shifts in timing from day to day, meaning the seven day forecast is probably going to show substantial adjustments or changes on a daily basis with this flow pattern getting so active. One thing I want to point out, and I touched on this yesterday, because several days ago, I, I started talking about a system that was coming in Tuesday of next week, that at the time was going to line up along the mouth of the Columbia. If true, that would pull an east wind out of the gorge, and maybe we, were, we would get some rain and snow in the valley. But now, no, 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 no. All of the models show every single low through next week positioning itself so that we get a westerly flow coming in. Um, if you've lived here for any time at all, we can get snow with the westerly flow, but the air mass out of the Gulf of Alaska has got to be super cold. And I just don't see that happening this time. So the fact that the flow pattern is mostly west has my rain forecast well into next week, just rain with no winter chances here in the valley. There are a couple chances, and I'll mention those coming up, of maybe some more snow or ice in the gorge. The Arctic air, which is going to be a big factor in the national weather forecast across our country for the next day, uh, for the next week, week and a half. Looks like that air mass stays north, stays east, 
and never really filtrates down into the Pacific Northwest. So we'll get uh, we'll get going more into that as well. Uh, all right, what are we talking about? Let's start off talking about the rain that's coming in yet tonight, tomorrow, and then the change in the forecast of that rain coming in on Thursday. So this is tomorrow morning. This is meant to act like a radar. This is that national blended model. This shows some a rain band offshore, shows some rain up in eastern and central Washington, some rain pushing out into eastern Oregon. Shows a little touch of some light rain, the gray colors here in the Portland area and Hillsboro and um, down into uh, maybe uh, Aurora tomorrow morning, but but not a lot, right? This is a pretty quiet start to your Wednesday. During the day, here we are, 10 o'clock, pretty quiet. Here we are, rain picking up along the southern coast. This is 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If you look at this, this is telling you that Portland, Salem, and Vancouver, and Kelso Longview will get more, no more, will get no more than a trace of rain on Wednesday with some light measurable rain amounts at the coast and some rain out across eastern Oregon as well. Let's keep playing this. This is going to take us into uh, the early morning hours of Thursday. Here's Thursday, 7 a.m. There's a little wave of some moisture inland. This rain, I think, has a chance to feed in during the morning hours as well. So I had Thursday mainly dry, but now there is a system showing up that would bring us Thursday morning rain that would break up more so in the afternoon. And then actually Friday, which was a big front day, is now looking pretty quiet. That's a change in timing that I've been talking about with the next big system coming in on Saturday. But clearly tonight, clearly Wednesday, clearly into Wednesday night, just some really light stuff around. We'll get some dry time as well. The east winds have faded a little bit coming out of the gorge. So most of the area actually enjoying some light, light winds at this time. Okay, um, this is, we're going to get into the fronts, the ones I'm tracking. This is the American GFS model. And let's just jump to Saturday. I mentioned Thursday morning rain. I mentioned Friday as a shower chance, but a pretty quiet day. And here's the next big front on Saturday. This is Saturday morning, 4 or 5 a.m. Here's the front dropping in. See these uh, dashed lines? Again, I talked about this yesterday. These are thickness lines. We use them for snow level, 540 534, that's a 3,000 foot snow level in the early morning hours. Then 40, this, this uh, contour right here, let's play this in to, here's the noon hour, that contour, which is uh, 28, that's a 2,000 foot snow level. So that continues to be part of this big story. Not only are we going to get active, but we're going to see finally systems drop snow at Cascade Pass level, and in this case, down to 2,000 feet. That's huge news. We need to get our snowpack in the Cascades jumped started, as you know. Now, see the highs up in Canada? That's that cold air. See, there's a 522 contour. That's super cold air. Here's the, uh, see the this dashed blue line? So most of the country, we're different because we start off at sea level. But most of the country is above sea level. Much of the country, I should say. And when you get east of the Rocky Mountains, the 540 thickness line, which is this first one that appears as blue. See, these are red. They're warmer. Here's the first blue one, 540 contour thickness line. That is the typical rain snow line for much of the country east of the Rockies. So this is showing that there's rain snow down in the Kentucky. This is colder air dropping down across much of the country. But it stays initially east of the Rockies. But anyway, Saturday, we have a pretty good front. This is, follow my mouse, this is a west flow coming in on the South side of that low. So that's just rain. That's a rainy day. Sunday, this particular model doesn't show it as well, but Sunday, I think we're pretty quiet. See this high out here? It's going to kind of feed in a little, inland a little bit. I think Sunday really still has a good chance of being dry, kind of a in-between day. And then we have a system that picks up the rain Monday morning. Here's Monday morning. Here's this low. This is kind of a warm front that's trying to push in. Here's the cold air. Uh, out of Canada and the Arctic, still blanketing much of Canada, but staying to our north and east. Here's a low that's going to be a pretty good snowstorm up in Wyoming and Nebraska. This is what, Monday of next week. That's going to be something to watch nationally. But back to our weather, this is just rain coming in. It's a southwesterly flow. That's just rain. And, and that's a system that could be drippy all day long. The stronger system comes in on Tuesday. Now here that is, this is coming in Tuesday. Here we are Tuesday afternoon. Um, pretty strong system, but again, it's a south, southwest flow pattern. Here's that cold Arctic air niping down now across Nebraska. Follow the blue contour. See the high center of the cold air coming down into uh, Montana and North Dakota. 
But the rain snow line, look at this, all the way down into Texas. This is cold air. And this is going to shoot some air into the gorge. So again, this is Tuesday afternoon of next week. At this point, I would have to tell you that we're at least watching the gorge for the chance of some snow, ice, or a mixture Tuesday of next week. Confidence is really high at this point that this is just going to be rain here in the valley. This is the system that at one point thought I was telling you I was watching that could produce some winter weather on the valley floor. But now at that time, see the low up here? At that time, the low is was tracking to be right down here near Astoria. The fact that the low is farther to the north, this is south-southwesterly flow, not as much of an east gorge pull of advection or cold air coming in either. So the gorge may be some winter weather, but the valley should just be all rain. And now here's that low dropping down. Now this is Wednesday. That's the position that I would watch. But by now, the orientation behind the front really isn't correct. See the cold air, see the, the lines that are close together. That's the packing of the cold air, mainly east of the Rockies. Anytime you have this type of a cold air mass shooting down across a good chunk of the country, and this is Arctic air. As a forecaster, you watch everything like a hawk because any little slight deviation, bam, and we'd get cold air coming through the gorge, clashing with Pacific moisture, we'd have snow or ice in the valley. Right now, I'm not seeing it. But again, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, Keep yourself updated. That low quickly falls down to the south and takes some moisture with it. Remember that northern part of the low for us can, can be the snow zone, but it drops away so quickly, I just don't see anything. But anyway, and here's that cold air, the rain snow line all the way down through Tennessee now, uh, across Missouri into the uh, Tennessee Valley. So I hope what you're getting out of this is there's a very active flow pattern. Right now, it looks like the Willamette Valley and the coast stays wet. There's a chance for some precipitation next week that would be winter, snow or ice in the gorge. But because of all this cold air up north, we continue to watch everything carefully. This is that air mass map at 850, the, the green and then that kind of purple color. That's that cold Arctic air. And just watch where it goes. This is just typical cool air coming out of the Gulf of Alaska and blue. So just watch with me the cold air mass. And we'll play this into, um, takes me a while to get there, sorry. Here's Monday. Let me play it into Tuesday. This is Tuesday afternoon. See, this is, see the wind barbs? This is a south, southwest, strong, aggressive flow. More typical, chilly, Pacific, moderated air coming in for us. While the cold Arctic air, look at the colors, knives down in North Dakota. This is absolutely sub zero weather for them, no doubt about it. Absolutely sub zero weather. Sub zero weather across Wisconsin. Heavy, heavy lake effect snows probably coming into Michigan. But notice how it just shifts off to the east. This is Thursday of next week and leaves us alone. So that is the update. I hope you find that interesting, just getting a flavor of the flow patterns that I look at and do analysis on. Mount Hood, the snow level today was lower than I thought. It was 4,000 feet. They picked up two, three inches of snow up there. How about that? At past level, government camp, two inches of snow. Yeah, there's the snow at roadside, government camp, 33 degrees. That's exciting. Tomorrow, 4,000 foot snow level, one to two inches of snow showers, maybe. Remember how light it looked? Maybe this is just flurries tomorrow. Thursday in the morning, two to four inches past level snow. Friday could just be flurries. And then look at this, Saturday, could we really get eight to 16 inches of snow with the snow level plummeting to three and then to 2,000 feet in the afternoon? Boy, I hope so. And then Sunday's dry. And then right now on Monday, I've got a snow level of 3,000 feet in the morning. And then I'm looking at my notes. Tuesday of next week, I've got a snow level to about 1,500 feet. And Tuesday is that day with heavier moisture. So really starting to look up uh, in terms of Mount Hood snow and Cascade snow in general. And you'll want to keep yourself updated on uh, travel conditions if you're going to be traveling. Portland seven day, there it is. Light showers tomorrow, 48. Thursday, morning rain that could end and break up into decreasing showers in the afternoon. Thursday night looks dry. Friday could be dry. I've got a shower chance included. And then the wetter days, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. Overnight lows, well above freezing on the days with moisture chances, with daytime highs in the 40s. This is clearly a colder weather pattern than we had in December. And clearly, these numbers you're looking at are actually pretty close to normal for this time of the year. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. Thanks for subscribing to this YouTube channel. My weather site's portlandweather.com. I'll talk to you soon.